All right, so we've got all of our data here within this cribs.ts file. So this is a TypeScript file. We've got this constant called cribs that we're exporting. And then the way that we consume this right now is over in our crib listing component, we import cribs, which is that set of data. And then we assign it to this local member called cribs, which is an array of type any. And then that's going to be equal to those cribs. That's going to give us all of the data for our application that we need thus far. Now, obviously this works for a quick example, but this isn't how you would get data in a real world application. Generally, the way that you would do it in the real world is you would make an HTTP request for this data when the application starts or when the component is initialized. So because we are implementing on init, we've got this lifecycle hook here that we can use. So generally what we do in the real world is we would make an HTTP request for the data that we need for this component whenever the application starts or the component is initialized. So what we'll do now is we will get a sense for how to use HTTP. We're not going to make any kind of server that's going to serve up the data, but we'll still get a good sense of how we use Angular's HTTP implementation. So the first thing that I'll want to do here is move this data directory one level up. So I'm going to place it a level up and then within there, I'm going to rename cribs.ts to cribs.json. So this is now going to be a JSON file JavaScript object notation. We just need to take out everything before the start of this array. And now we've got ourselves a JSON file. And the reason that we're using a JSON file like this is because when you use HTTP to get some data from a server, generally you're going to be getting it back in JSON format. And JSON gives us this nice compact way of receiving data and being able to use it very easily in our JavaScript applications. All right, so now this is a JSON file. And if we go over to our crib listing component, well, that's not going to work to bring in anything called cribs from this data cribs directory because it doesn't exist anymore. So we've got to take this out as well and we'll just cap it right there for the time being. So now what we want to do is make an HTTP request for this data. And the first step to get there is to use the HTTP library that comes from Angular. So we say we want to import HTTP from at angular http. So that's now going to give us the HTTP class that comes from Angular. So we're importing this class, but we also need to inject it into our component. And so this will make use of the implementation that Angular gives us for injecting dependencies within our app. And the way that we inject it is we come down to our constructor and we say that we wanna call this a private HTTP and then we pass HTTP just like that. So now this will give us a private instance of HTTP and we can use it within our application by calling this.http. Now, one of the methods that comes from HTTP is get. So anytime we want to make a get request for some data, we would call dot get, and we can pass a URL now for where we're getting that data from. And in our case, it's coming from the data directory and from our cribs.json file. Now, making HTTP requests is what's known as an asynchronous operation. So anytime we make a request for some data, or if we were to post some data to the server, we don't really know exactly when the response response is going to come back. We know that we should expect some response back sometime in the future, but we have no way of knowing exactly when that's going to happen. And when we construct our applications, it really wouldn't be good usability if we had to sit and wait for that response to come back before we could have anything else happen in the application. And so for that reason, we want these HTTP requests to be asynchronous. We wanna say, hey, here's a request. I'm gonna make a request to the server. I know that something will come back at some point in the future, but for the time being, other things can take place in the application and I'll deal with a response once it comes back. Now, there are a few different ways to handle asynchronous operations. Some of the more common ones that you may have seen are things like callbacks. So you could provide a function, usually it would have an error and then some data, and then you could deal with that data when it comes back. So that's the callback way of handling asynchronous operations. And then other times you would be dealing with promises and promises would often give you a then method, which would provide you the data that you're looking for. So once your data comes back, you can operate on it as you wish. However, Angular's HTTP implementation actually uses what are called observables. So any HTTP request made with Angular is going to return an observable. And observables are a very large topic and we'll have lots of content here on Angular Cast about observables. But generally, observables give us a way to handle values over the course of time. 
And in this way, they're a much more powerful interface to deal with asynchronous operations than callbacks and promises are. And because Angular's HTTP requests give us an observable back, what we can do is we can subscribe to the result of that request. And it's within this subscription that we'll be able to get the data and make use of it. But before we subscribe to the observable, what we want to do is make sure that we get it back as JSON. And the way that we can do that is to use an operator from the RxJS library called map. So up here, I'm going to import something from RxJS, and that's going to be rxjs add operator map. And this will give us an operator called map, which is going to allow us to transform the values that come back from this HTTP request. So down here, let's say that we want to map the values that come back. So we'll take the response and we want to map it as JSON. So our HTTP request goes out, we make a get request for data slash cribs.json, and then whatever comes back, we're going to map it as JSON. And now we can subscribe to the result of it. So let's just bump this down to the next line, and I'm now going to subscribe to the result. And within the subscription, we'll have some data. And for now, why don't we just log that data to the console so we can see that it comes back okay for us. So let's save that, and then let's head back over to the application. And what we see is we've got unexpected token semicolon. So I think what happened is that within our data, we forgot to take something away. And of course it is that semicolon that used to sit at the end of this array because it used to be JavaScript, but now of course it's JSON. So let's try this again now. Let's go back over to the application and we'll refresh. And now what we get is the list of objects that we'd expect from our data. So now we've got all of our real estate listings as we want them. And so let's use this now instead of that static data that we were using before. Let's use the data that we get through this HTTP request to power the view here. So back over within our component, let's just pass all of this data to this cribs property now. So when data comes back, let's say this.cribs equals that data. And now what we should expect to see is our application will be displaying that data once more. And there we go. We've got all of the application data coming through as we want again. Now there's a second parameter that comes back from our subscription and that is any potential error. So what we can do is we can say that let's set this potential error that comes back. So if there's any kind of error that comes along with this request, let's set this to a local property called error. And so we'll say that this.error equals error.statusText. So that's going to be a property that's going to come back with this error. And we see this is underlined in red here because we haven't initialized this yet. So let's come up here and we'll say that error, if there is one, is going to be a string. And now if there's an error that comes through, we can display it on the screen however we like. All right, so this is good. We've got all of our application data coming through this HTTP request, but what we should actually be doing is using a service to get this data. And services give us a lot of advantages. One of them is that they are reusable. So we can create a service that will give us access to this HTTP request, and then it can be reused in various places within our application. So let's create a service for this. I'm going to come over here and create a new directory called services. So that's where all of our services services will live. And then over on the command line, let's generate a new service. So I'm going to cd into source app services. And then within here, let's generate a new one. So we'll do ng g for generate service, and let's call this cribs. And what we see when we generate it is that it gets generated for us, but it doesn't get provided. So let's see how this works. Back over in our editor, over in our services directory, we see we've got this cribs.service.ts file, and it has this injectable decorator, meaning that we can inject it through dependency injection within our application. So just by way of example, this HTTP class that comes from Angular, that's something that has that injectable decorator as well, saying that we can inject it here within the constructor and make use of it in our component. So the same goes for this service. It's going to be injectable and then we can get it through the dependency injection system. Now again, we got that message that the service wasn't provided. And what that means is that we have to come over here to our app module and within the providers key on our ng module, we have to actually say that we want to get that service. We want the cribs service. And of course we haven't imported it yet. So let's come up here and let's say import the cribs service and we're gonna import it from services cribs.service. 
So now the crib service is being imported and we're providing it so that it can be used throughout our application. So we'll save that and then over on our service, let's create a method to get all of the cribs. Essentially, this will be the place that will handle the HTTP request that we did previously in our component. So let's say get all cribs is going to be a method. And in this, we're going to return an HTTP request. Now, of course, we have to import HTTP from Angular. So we'll say import HTTP from at Angular HTTP. And then here in the constructor, again, we'll do private HTTP. And that's how we inject our HTTP class. And now we can make use of it. So we'll say here that we want to return an HTTP request. So this.http. And again, we're doing a get request. And that's going to go to data slash cribs.json. And what we'll do here is we'll map this out in JSON format before it actually gets returned. So as a reminder over here in our component, we're mapping this to JSON format as we do the HTTP request before we subscribe to the result. If we didn't do this, we'd get back the data, but it might not be formatted as we like in JSON format. So let's just copy this bit and come over here to the service and we'll say that we want to return this as JSON. Now we also need to import that operator from RxJS. So we'll say import RxJS add operator map. And that gives us the map operator available to be used on this request. Okay, so this service is in place now. Now let's go over and change up the component to make use of it. So up here, I'm going to actually import the crib service. So import crib service from, and then we need to go a level up and we want to go into services and we want to go into our cribs.service. Now, since this is an injectable service, we need to inject it first before we can use it. So here I'm going to say private cribs service is going to be an instance of cribs service. And we can just bump this down onto a new line so that it's a bit more readable. And we'll bump this down as well. So now we've got our crib service. And now instead of doing this HTTP request directly like this, let's use the crib service instead. And it's going to look a little bit similar, but it's going to be drawing this request from the service as opposed to making the request directly. So we'll say this crib service, and we'll say get all cribs. And again, another really nice feature of TypeScript is that we can get the methods that are available to us. So we'll say get all cribs. And this is going to give us the chance to subscribe now. And now essentially what we want to do is just take the same logic that we had up here in our subscription and we want to apply it to the result of our get all cribs call. So we've got a subscription that gives us our data coming back. And if we've got some data, we're going to put it onto the cribs property. And if we have any errors, those will go onto the error property. All right. So now let's get rid of this HTTP call that we had before. And let's just make sure that this is working as expected. So we should see our list of cribs still in place when we refresh. And sure enough, we've got it. So let's go back and let's just clean anything up that doesn't need to be here. So for instance, we don't need to any longer import the map operator because we're using that in the service instead of our local component here. So once again, the advantage to using a service for this as opposed to doing it directly within our component is that a service allows us to reuse this logic and use it across our application in multiple places. So it's very likely that in many different locations within our app, we'd want some method to get a list of all of our real estate listings, but we wouldn't necessarily want to do the same kind of get logic everywhere that that's necessary. The other thing is that if we have all of our HTTP logic in services, then it becomes a lot easier to test these calls. All right, so that's it for now. In the next video, we're going to see how to add new listings in.